Let's talk about one of the very, very important parts of the Detroit Lions offense that nobody's talking about, and that's receiver Marvin Hall. Marvin Hall is one of, I think, three players that's very important to the Detroit Lions offense that nobody talks about, and I think that's Tyler Johnson with his incredible workout that he's doing on social media, you know, dragging a Jeep, bench prep, bench rep, bench press routine. Go check him out on social media. Also, we talk about the Huntley character that we drafted in like the sixth round. And we talking about uh, DeAndre Swift because they bring a, a different dynamic to the offense. They bring elite level breakaway speed to the offense. But Marvin Hall is very important. Let's talk about it. We back Motor City Sports Talk. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Appreciate the love support. Everybody hold us down. But uh, yeah, Marvin Hall is very important. And I think you got to look to get him on the field more um, in different situations. Maybe bunching them up where you get a free release, put them in motion. His ability gave Matthew Stafford a deep ball target down the field, especially if they're able to get Galladay to, to do what he continued to do and, and make plays outside, and Jones can continue to make plays outside and underneath. And if they can get Amendola and TJ Hawkinson both to get the middle of the field or at least one of them on, on the field at a time to control the middle of the field, Marvin Hall is very, very important because he should be able to have a big year. And if he can take some attention – you know, and he can he can get the safeties to look at him, and they can start peeking at him. Then Galladay gonna see a lot more one on ones. Hawkinson gonna see some more one on ones. So his ability to to get down the field and, and score touchdowns and get major plays and get chunk plays, him and Swift and, and if Huntley can make the team, it's gonna be vital to to the Lions' success offensively. They get the Lions a wrinkle that they didn't have last year. You know, Marvin Hall was here. He had a small part, but. I was thinking they should have just gave him the slot receiver role and let Amendola and let Amendola walk. But he has to become a better polished route runner. He can't just be a run trick pony. You know, you know, uh Amendola can run the whip, he can run the drag, he can run the slant, he can run the deep out, he can run the in, he can run the dig, you know, he can run the flag, the post, the post corner, you know, the, the, remember the stick and knob route. He can ride he can run all those damn routes. He's a route technician. And that's the issue with it right there. Hall has to show that he can run the, the, the full route tree in the slot. And if he can run the route tree in the slot and he can get it underneath and he can get it over the middle, you know, and if he can get, and if he can, you know, catch those drags and catch those slants and, and get yards at the catch, it's just going to make, it's just going to make his game down the, down the road, down the uh, field that much more deadly. But he brings a dynamic that Stafford really ain't had, you know, <sighs> You know, other than Calvin, but Calvin is the big uno. He the honcho. You know what I'm saying? Galladay is the honcho. They need somebody. They always need somebody next to Stafford, like a Deshaun Jackson. Golden Tate came in and did well. And he had, he can do it all, but he ain't an elite level threat down the field. Hall can be an elite level threat down the field if he cleans up his route running ability. The way he can, he can get under those balls and catch them with his hands and he get his feet in bounds on those whatever the hell he wanted, deep crossing routes, those post routes. He going to bring a dynamic to the team that other teams not going to account for because you worried about all the other weapons. You know, especially if they able to get Swift the ball, like they get Kamara the ball in New Orleans, and Swift is able to, you know, run the ball, you know, through the holes. Hall is going to become an unstoppable and immovable force out there as well, too, because, who? I mean, who do you who do you stop? If you double Galladay, you give attention to Galladay, you got Swift coming on the backfield. If Swift and Johnson and Scar both Scarboroughs run the ball well, you play action and Marvin Hall is getting down, down the field. So Hall's speed is going to be very, very vital to what the Lions do. And them getting him involved when Stafford do play action to get on those bootlegs or double moves and kind of getting him to run the route tree. This should be Amendola last year playing the slot for the Lions. Marvin Hall should be working on all his routes and being able to run the full route tree in the slot. And also if he can do that, he can play on the outside a little bit. You can put Galilee in the slot and Marvin can run enough routes in the slot. You could do so many creative things with him. You could do reverses. You can do screens to him. It's very, very important that this is the year that he take over for Amendola and he becomes the starting slot receiver probably next year or at some point this year. Cause we all know Amendola is going to get injured. That's just what his history is telling us. But Marvin Hall, He's going to be very, very important because his speed, Swift speed, Huntley speed, and they, they lose Agnew speed, that's the elite level speed. And that's kind of where the NFL is going. 
Demarcus Robinson, Tyreek Hill, um, you know, uh, uh, they got it Harmon, you know, that's where it's going. That's you see what the, the uh, Broncos doing. They gave Drew Locke a whole bunch of uh, weapons, Jerry Judy, uh, to compete with Kansas City. Raiders is loading up on weapons to compete with Kansas City. You know, look at uh, what the Texans done. Even though they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins, they got faster with Brandon Cooks. They got more shiftier with Randall Cobb. Will Filler coming back. I think they still got Kenny Stills. Maybe not. Maybe he walked. But, you know, one thing that's great about Marvin Hall, too, other than what he can bring on the field, is he cheap. <laughs> he cheap. You know what I'm saying? So you're not paying a ton of money to, to a guy to go out there and give you good production. His production should outweigh his contract, you know, by 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 country miles. You know, so they gotta find a way to get him the ball. And if they can run that rock, he he don't be don't sleep on him being a thousand yard receiver this year. If they can run that rock. Because he's gonna have so many opportunities with them. you know, Stafford got a lot of weapons on offense. The question is running the ball and how the line gonna hold up. But jump, but Hall ability to get down the field, that's going to be huge. Because you ain't got to worry about nobody catching Hall. Hall going to be able to run away. So putting him in motion, munching him up, making him unbumpable on the line, you know, teaching him how to get off blocks on the outside, you can move him around. And if they going to start paying attention to him, Amendola should eat, Hawkinson should eat, Swift should eat, Galladay should eat, Jones can eat. He is one, he is one of the most vital parts of this offense going from being a top 10 offense to creeping up in the top five because he brings a dynamic that no other receiver bring. He can get it down the field. If they can get it from the backfield, that speed from the backfield, and they get the speed from, from the receiver position, Stafford, the, the game going to be a lot easier for Stafford than it was last year. You know what I'm saying? So they got to they gotta look for that kid. They got to put packages in there for them. You know, they got to bunch him up, you know, and, and they got to look for him. You know, Hawkinson is going to be important. His year one, year two progression. Daryl Bevel is going to, you know, he's he more important than, than anybody on offense outside the offensive line in the running game because he the one that got to find a way to get the most out of Hall, the most out of Hawkinson, the most out of Swift. He more of an old school West Coast offensive coordinator that like to run the ball in between the tackles, play action, and do some of those West Coast principles. But now he got to show he can involve Hawkinson in the in the tight end, in the middle of the field game. He got to show that he can he can develop Hall to go down the field. He got to show he can run the ball here like he did with Marshawn. He did with Adrian Peterson. So he got his work cut out for him. But Hall Hall is the guy y'all sleeping on. Hall can can get can make the Lions, you know, offense from pretty good to elite. And if he they can run the ball and they can get. The, the the they can get the, the him down the field and making plays down the field and get him making plays underneath, he gonna be a problem and that's gonna open up for for Galladay. That's gonna open up for Jones. They gonna see a lot more one on ones and as they should be seeing right now because it's spread out. You go out there with Hawkinson, Amendola, Galladay, and you go out there with Jones and Swift or Carry on in the backfield. You know you shouldn't be able to double nobody, but if you are able to put Marvin Marvin Hall out there and he can get down the field. You know, safety's going to be peaking. Safety's going to cheat, you know. And now all of a sudden, underneath going to open up. Under, underneath, and Stafford can be able to hit those deep ends. He can be able to hit those comeback routes. And, you know, once they try to start taking those away, Hall going to get a lot of one-on-ones. A lot of one-on-ones. So, Hall is a guy that people sleeping on, man. And he he's the only receiver out there that's, that, that bring that elite-level speed down the field. So, that's something that we ain't really had. You know what I'm saying? And Titus Young was was starting to bring that for the Lions, but obviously he went cuckoo. Ryan Bros was a guy that was more shiftier than fast, quick than fast. So we ain't never really, you know, in a long time had that Deshaun Jackson type receiver, man. So we need that guy on this team. I think Marvin Hall can can do that. So hopefully he working hard. Uh, hopefully Daryl Bevel was drawing up some plays because they was highly successful with him last year. And I still think he flying under the radar on most uh, Detroit Lions ops you know, for the 2020 season. And the, the uh, schedule should be released later this uh, week. And they're saying that the Lions won't be playing any international games this year or any NFL team. It was said that the Jacksonville Jaguars was going to play two games in London. And low-key, they might was trying to move them to London as well in the near future because they're not selling no tickets in Jacksonville. Maybe they can move to San Antonio 
Uh, I know Jerry Jones stopped the Raiders from moving there quite some time ago. But, uh, but yeah, the Lions won't be playing on international games. It's supposed to be playing the Jags. It was rumored in London, but that may not happen. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. If you have a business question, inquiry, response, video request, share the videos. Don't forget to check out the podcast link. It's in the description. I should be cooking something up real nice on the podcast soon. Uh, Want to make a donation, cash out, PayPal in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. And don't forget to check out the channel out, Goodfellas Sports TV, for more sports, music, news, and entertainment. One time for the one time. We gone.